stones can speak. Jesus said about the people who were praising him on Palm Sunday, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Shakespeare speaks of sermons in stones. And what I've just read to you also speaks about the stones themselves crying out. There are quite a few references to stones in the New Testament. I'd like us to think about a few of them today. Some of the things that stones can do. Firstly, stones could cry out in praise to Jesus. On Palm Sunday, Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And he was proclaiming to all the people that he was indeed the Messiah who was coming in peace to bring salvation to all who would receive him. And the crowd was full of enthusiasm. They laid their cloaks on the ground to act as a carpet for him to ride over. They cut branches of palms and other trees and strewed them before him. They waved palm branches in jubilation to welcome the Messiah. We read, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They were quoting from Psalm 118 there. We're also told that there were children in the crowd active in praising Jesus. We're also told, though, that there were Pharisees there in the crowd who were not pleased. They were not happy. And they said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. You see, there is a time for all things. And this was definitely a time for praising God. Specifically, it was a time to acknowledge that Jesus was the coming Messiah. And Jesus is saying, if the people don't do that, well, even the very stones lining in a road are going to cry out in praise if the people are not doing it. And these words tell us that there is a time to be outgoing and evangelistic about our faith. There is a time to praise God with a loud voice. There is a time to boldly proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah, the Saviour of the world. It's our task now to do what that crowd was doing then on Palm Sunday and proclaim that Jesus is the Saviour. So stones could potentially cry out in praise to Jesus. The second thing that stones can do is to be used as a building material, to build an edifice. Listen to these words of Peter from his first epistle. You, he says to his readers, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Peter is telling them and us that we're like stones being used in the construction of a great building, a temple for the Lord. That temple is the church of Jesus Christ, not a physical building anywhere. But the whole church of Jesus Christ worldwide is that temple of God. And we are being built into it. Like building stones, we're meant to fit together to make a secure wall. The stones have to fit in alongside one another. 
they're carefully cut and finished so that they will all form a strong structure. But as someone has once said, building up the church is rather like building with bananas. You can't get them to fit together. They slide over one another. So let us allow the Lord to work in our lives, to finish us off, to mould us and shape us so that we do fit together in the wall of his holy temple and make one firm structure. Peter, who wrote these words, was himself called a stone or a rock, because that's what Peter means. Jesus said that his church would be based on the foundation of the same kind of faith that Peter had when he announced that Jesus was indeed the son of the living God. Later, in this passage, Peter also speaks of another stone. A stone that can become a cornerstone. And this is what Peter says. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. That's from 1 Peter chapter 2. A stone can become a corner stone. Now, these are words quoted by Peter from the Psalms. The cornerstone is what you might call the keystone of the building. Everything depends on that stone. You start off with that stone and you build out from it. Without the cornerstone being in place, the whole building falls apart. In the same way, Peter is saying, Christ is central to his church. Without him, the cornerstone there, the whole church just falls apart. Now, that might seem to be very obvious to us, but it's surprising how often people forget this truth. They try to build the church without Christ. They try to just build up um, a social club or a voluntary organisation, somewhere where people go to do good works, without the preaching of Christ as the saviour of the world. Without that preaching of Christ as the saviour of the world, the church is nothing. He is the keystone. If he's not there, then it's not really a church. And that stone is often rejected. Peter says, He's referring to the fact that Jesus was rejected by the Pharisees and the other religious leaders of his day. And yet now he is risen, he's triumphant, and he's Lord of all. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For some people, Peter says, that stone, Christ, is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offence. He was a stone of stumbling to the Pharisees who wouldn't accept his teaching. They couldn't accept the fact that he welcomed sinners into God's kingdom. They rejected Christ and instead trusted in their own self-righteousness. He was a stumbling block to them. Let us make sure he will never be a stumbling block to us. Fourthly, stones can be used as weapons to execute justice. The law of Moses pro 
prescribed stoning for a number of offences, including adultery. On one occasion, the scribes and the Pharisees brought before Jesus a woman caught in the very act of adultery, and they asked what should be done. It's interesting that they caught the man and woman together in the act of adultery, and they brought the woman to Jesus and let the man go. Well, you wonder why they did that. But they brought the woman before Jesus, and they wanted to try and catch Jesus out. Jesus said, Let the one who is without sin cast the first stone. And when they all retired, shamefaced, he said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. According to the law, stones were to be used to execute justice on those deemed worthy of death. But Jesus came with forgiveness and grace for the repentant sinner. He did not condemn the woman. Neither did he condone what she had been doing. He told her to sin no more. How precious this truth is to us. The law condemns us, but the grace of Jesus saves us from the curse of the law. Without this grace, there'd be no hope for any of us. Not just the obvious sinners. It was because Jesus died on the cross that he's able to offer us this grace. On the cross of Calvary, he took upon himself our sins, suffered the punishment we deserved. Through his death, we are freed from our sins and from their consequences. We shall not have to face the judgment of the law when we trust in Jesus. Finally, a stone can be rolled away to reveal the ultimate victory. On the day that Jesus rose from the dead, the women went down to his tomb to anoint his body with spices. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb and the body of Jesus gone. Angels proclaimed to them that Christ was risen. And so the victory was revealed. A removed stone testified to the risen Christ. As we go through Holy Week, we quite rightly concentrate on the suffering and the death of Jesus, especially on Good Friday. But although we do that, we mustn't forget the final victory. We mustn't forget that Good Friday is good because there Jesus defeated evil and rose again on Easter Day. His rising from the dead sets the seal to all that he did for us on the cross. Without Easter Day, Holy Week would be just a, a sad week of sorrowing and commemoration. But with the knowledge of Easter Day, Holy Week is a preparation for victory. So there we have five different types of stones that can do different things. Stones that can praise God, and we should praise God. Stones that can build a temple to the Lord, and we are called as living stones to be built into that temple, which is the church of God. A stone that can be the corner or keystone, and Jesus is that cornerstone. May he never be a stumbling block to us. May we wholeheartedly trust in him. Stones should be the means of executing the sentence of the law upon the sinner. 
But Jesus died so that we might not be under the law, but under grace. And finally, a stone was rolled away when Jesus rose from the dead, triumphant over sin and death. May we all share in his victory. Amen. We sing together number 234. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Hark all the tribes, Hosanna cry. O Saviour meek, pursue thy road, with palms and scattered garments strode. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and remain with us forevermore. Amen. Amen.